Hello. At first sight, this sonata movement by Albinoni may not appear to be anything exceptional at all, but I'm going to show you ways of making it more interesting than it really is. The first job of the interpreter is, once one has become familiar with the music, is to seek out its emotional potential, the emotional quality or affect of the piece or the qualities of the piece. At first sight, looking at this piece, it looks like a rumbustious old allegro that I'm very tempted to play. But uh, then I look at the tonality and say, oh, it's E minor. And E minor is known as being a very gentle key. The French referred to it as a tender key. So bearing that in mind, maybe the first bar should be more like... And the second bar, well, that's B major, the relative major, and that's quite a brash harmony, as opposed to the more tender E minor. So I can have a kind of contrast, I'll exaggerate, between those two tonalities, juxtaposed one beside the other. So instead of playing one quality of stroke. I'd be more tempted to do to bring out those different qualities. Now, talking about qualities of bow stroke, talk about articulation. The articulation is the quality of each, each note really, each sound whether it's long or short, or detached or attached to the notes before and after it, or both or neither. Um, and there's no scheme for that, except that often when we have notes that are going stepwise, it's nice to make them more lyrical as opposed to arpeggiated ones like that. And I would say the first note, because it establishes the harmony, presumably there's a chord in the in the harpsichord so we have the first note and then the other notes kind of um come off that i wouldn't play but uh and then etc so we have lots of different kind of uh notes one could challenge oneself that no two notes should sound exactly the same so that the interest is always there remember that if everything is important nothing is important so there always has to be contrast between important and less important notes let's move on bar five and sequence there too is Beautiful flow to the music. But the th second and third notes of each bar act as a kind of counter flow. They contradict the, the flow. Um, and we can say that they are, in a way, less relevant than the main flow and so we can put them in brackets rhetorically speaking there are parentheses so i'm going to make them just a bit lighter and a little bit distant and perhaps just a little bit delayed so instead of playing through it'll be just have that little lilt which makes it more interesting there. The next two bars, bars um, 9 and 10, are clearly a hemiola. So instead of being 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, they are 1, 2, 3. A big 3 in place of two little 3s. And the impact that that has on our playing means that we don't stress the beginning of the second bar. If I did, if I ignored the hemiola, it would sound something like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Whereas if it's with a big three, one and two, three, one. So 
I just ignore that beginning of the second bar. Let's move on to bar 19. There's a lot of shifting from the third position down to the first. And luckily, or perhaps on purpose, Albanoni has given us open strings, open E strings in both cases, in which we can um, comfortably shift. So, coming into bar 19, we have... We have that open E string. And we can take advantage of it. And the same thing happens in bar 30, where we have... So I'm just shifting during the um, open string. Going into bar 30, taking advantage of that to shift down. Moving on to bar 25, there are slurs all through this piece, um, three notes to a slur. And we know, primarily from Leopold Mozart, that a slur implies a small amount of stress on the first note and a bit of decay on the second and, in this case, second and third notes. So instead of playing um, in bar 25, I'll play and so making the slur into something which is more expressive, not merely a not merely a legato between three notes. Moving on to bar 34. Here the text splits into two. There's the upper part, which is just the pedal B, and the more interesting lower part. So I'm tempted just to play the lower part with a lot of bow and the upper part with very little and quite short. So play that speed. And you can hear what the difference between that and and when I play with absolutely no distinction between more important and less important notes. So there's a kind of subplot. The same thing as happens in bar 40. Here we have the, the bass note that's interesting. Like that. And the notes after it kind of bounce off it. Again, like hitting the rubber ball. Like that. interesting lower part and the upper part which is less interesting. So those are just a few way, ways of making a movement like this really bringing it to life and it's so important always to remember that not all notes are important. If all notes are important then no notes are important, they're all the same. There we go, enjoy your practicing. <laughs>